Walker show. So I flew him, uh, the gallery did, to Japan at the time, and uh, Greg Detra. <laughs> so, nice. Uh, I figured you probably know him. Oh, but, yeah. yeah well, a, I used to hang with Ryan, his brother, for a while. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> it just, yeah, just like, just, I just was like, man, I, I want to like have my, you know, I, I also, although I'm doing this thing, want to have again friends and have the shared experience with friends. So, yeah, the, the, the gallery is awesome. I, I there's them. something really nice about the implied casual nature of the work. Like you're saying, other oh, doodles, you know, hmm. works on paper in an envelope. But like, I think because of that, you've been able to, you know, move in these different directions it seems like you don't like you did a t-shirt for phil brown right oh yeah i'm like i'm like i think that was yeah yeah i love that shop glide i think i have that actually yeah. i have one of them but mm-hmm. like the, the but then you think about it people like george condo was he was a crazy successful painter but he's doing decks with supreme like you know yeah i think christopher wool did one too but like you know it's kind of Totally. They had to get to a point to do that, and you're just kind of like, no, nah, I'm okay with this, and it's great, and people respect it still, which is kind of a something you wouldn't learn in art school, you might say. That makes me feel really warm inside, to hear you say, because I, I, sometimes I think until people tell us stuff, we don't know, if that makes sense. I oftentimes don't really know where I stand. Um, mm-hmm. and, and again, being an anxious person, I tend to kind of like... Uh, change directions quickly if I start to think that like I'm like well you know I'm doing this thing I don't know is this really lame and then I'm like well you know what don't dwell on that too much like start making another thing um, and so when someone again like you just said and you're like oh I, I think that's good I'm like well thanks um, and I, I imagine that being probably like a chef and being like I don't know I'm putting plates out and they're coming back clear so um, but but yeah I think a large element to that though is I can't work on something for terribly long my attention mm-hmm. spans pretty shot and this was long before the internet I always have been really hyper with that so um, I'm and I don't feel like I'm even as prolific as I want to be but friends and peers are like it's scary like that you want like that you're making so much stuff but again they're fast they're quick things they're they're hot takes they're not precious I'm not precious with my stuff I mean I, I, I do like making my work but I don't want it particularly around me all the time so if somebody Mm -hmm. wants it I want them to have it Um, and that has helped a lot through default because having a bunch of stuff and then people uh, wanting it and getting it out gives me the opportunity to make more Mm -hmm. are you in business let me ask this then we're talking about galleries and everything what what about NFTs? Have you started to explore that at all? I have to ask that. Like, yeah, I feel like no, I'm glad you asked it. Such a big thing. No, I'm, I, and I. So, um, because as I touched on earlier, I'm I'm pretty luddite-ish. Like, I'm relatively savvy with my phone. I can answer it in text and use Instagram. Um, even just to do this interview tonight, mm-hmm. um, I'm really fortunate that like my partner is way more tech savvy than I am. So when the whole <laughs> NFT thing came around, um, I feel like last winter was when it was like really yeah. being discussed a lot. I was with um, my printer who does all my print stuff and I was in his space and he was like, hey, have you thought about this? You know, and, and of course it's that wild new frontier and it just seemed, again, because of that Luddite perhaps old, I don't know if I want to say old school, but whatever it is, the apprehensive kind of, I'm going to wait on this feeling. I'm one of those people that I know I've miss, missed out on like a uh, cryptocurrency. I've missed out on that probably. I've missed out on certain things because I'm the one that's like, I'm going to wait. Um, and I'm a kind of a, like a little bit of a long watch, but I have made to answer your question on NFT um, nice. with, with a band, like a pretty big, or they're a lovely band, <laughs> they're musicians. And so they were like, we want to animate something that you create and then put music to it, um, which to me, it was like, oh, I've never really thought about that, but okay. And the only way an NFT would happen for me is if ultimately someone else took the reins to do yeah. it. And so when I was approached, I was like, look, you guys want to do this. I'm honored that you've reached out to me to do it. Um, it's supposed to come out relatively soon. That's why I don't really want to, I mean, and, and again, it's, it's way over my head. Someone could just be like, I don't really understand how it works. But when I was at Art Basel this year walking around, uh, I think 90% of the things that were happening in Miami this year had to do with NFTs, had to do mm-hmm. with crypto. Um, hmm. And that's cool. I'm not like, I don't want to 
you know, age myself and be the guy that's like, nope, I'm not getting behind it. But at the same time, like, I genuinely don't know how, uh, I don't understand it terribly well. But if somebody wanted to approach me and they want to do that end of it, and that's how it's been with a lot of things, um, I'm like, look, I'll bury you in work um, and give you stuff, <laughs> but uh, you got to tell me how to get it minted, and or you have to go do that, do that part, and we'll. This is about to become a grandpa quest, a grandpa conversation, <laughs> but when no, because I'm what? still wrapping my heads around this, but uh, the um the NFT, if you're making one to a song. Is there a specific running time for an NFT? Like, yeah, I thought so they're the, more like uh, GIFs, right? Like, if they're animated. Did say that? Huh? A GIF? I thought it was GIF. It could be both, actually, well, technically. Okay, this is good. Choosy moms <laughs> choose GIF. Okay, good. That's what I was told. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> potato, yeah, potato. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, it's Jeff? Okay. It's me, right? It's not Meme. My, my buddies, uh, Reed and Raider, were Meme. making them back in the day. It's not Vogue, Meme. It's me. And they called um, it GIF. So. Okay, good. So the GIF, here's the GIF. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, it, uh, it plays on a loop, and the music yeah. is on that loop with it, if that okay. makes sense. That makes um, and it's, sense, it's yeah. non, um, there's no vocals, it's instrumental. Um, nice. Yeah, it is. It's 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 really pleasurable to look at. I just again, I'm some of them like I still inhabit that landscape. That's like, is it in a frame on the wall near my bed? When I wake up, I can look at it, and it's like, no, it's something it's on that's phone. on a loop on your screen. Yeah, and I'm like, I don't know if I need to be on my phone any more than I already. Am. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Also, but, if it's the same yeah. song on a loop, how long are you going to look at it if it is on the wall playing? Eventually, just going to be like. Yeah, and I don't want to damage the potential of people wanting to buy this thing because I think it's lovely, but I don't. No, no, yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> but no, it but sounds yeah. fantastic. I'm just yeah. trying to wrap my head around it, like how it how it functions as a piece of artwork that you enjoy. And I'm with I, you on. I, I'm with you on that. Yeah. I, yeah. I just wonder, like, I guess, like some of the appeal, I guess, for the NFT is also. I wonder, and I don't know. I'm. We, we, Chris, we should probably get someone on here for an episode to discuss yeah. this one day, but. I also yeah. thought it was. I was under the the impression that if it's sold, you can track it and then potentially yep. recover money, even future sales of it, to back to the artist. You know, um, because there's all that all the crypt, you know, um, blockchain technology that tracks it all. Right, uh, it gets minted, so it's kind yeah. of got like fingerprints. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and I I love the way that sounds. Yeah. That that's like you know because that's one of the biggest uh, issues in the in the art world I've always heard was like you know artists you know will sell their piece for like twenty grand and then it you know attains value over a few years and then someone sells it for like a few million dollars or a few hundred grand and the artist doesn't make anything off that you know and that's been one of the biggest complaints oh. as an artist. Yeah. I don't know. I don't they know. Should just make more paintings at that point. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'm really happy that Chris said that. And I don't want to like, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be fighting the the, the the tide. But at the same time, I'm like, but that's kind of, if that's the case, then uh, I think then you can do that with almost anything. It's like someone being like, because it's an experiential thing. You know, yeah. if I'm like, mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. I went to your restaurant and I ate the thing. I'm like, but you didn't go. So. And I'm like, but then I went and made the recipe. I made the thing once I found out how to make it. And then you're like, well, you got to, it's like, that's, yeah. I think that's going to end up happening and it's been happening, but I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm inspired by them. I will say like the stuff that I saw and I saw so much well, again, while I was in South Florida this December, stylistically, a lot of it was very, um, again, because it's a digital landscape, the art or the, the images, I guess, are really leaning into kind of like a 16-bit kind of mm -hmm. look, which um, is, is uh, you know, nostalgic for me because it's stuff I, I grew up looking at, but also mm -hmm. um, aesthetically, I'm like, I don't really, um, you know, love uh, ha the idea of having this as a, as a thing. But but if it's a an investment, I totally get it. Um, you know, if something you invest in, how is it different than investing in stock or... That's cool. I just from I'm, because I'm a visual based person, I'm just like, oh, I don't know if like a monkey in a top hat that looks kind of like Legos is what I want. But um, yeah, cool. I do think at one point we should have an expert on 
regarding yeah. this stuff? Because yeah, I think sure. it's just kind of letting the general public into the real secondary market of art in the deregulated way it's been for the forever. So it's kind Our of heads it's, might it's the, explode. Though. It's That's yeah, the only it's kind of like. <laughs> The NFTs are pulling yeah. the curtain, like, you know, the Wizard of Oz curtain aside when it comes right. to how people have been manipulating currencies through art for the past, whatever, 100, you know, 100 yeah. years or whatever it might be. So it'd be fun to do that. We'll do that one at one point. Yeah. But I um, still don't fully understand how it operates. Yeah. I'm still learning. Um, I also, I wanted to talk to, I, like, you've had some amazing collaborations, too. You've worked with a lot of different companies. Um who have been some of your your the most enjoyable collaborators, and who have been some of the most challenging? I'm curious. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, um, I can answer half of that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so to start, to, to start, because I again working with people that I really enjoy, not just what it is that they produce or make, but also maybe particularly the the route or the ethos that they have. I think is really special when those things all align. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to plug Patagonia too much, but they were. They have been lovely to work with um, as a as a as a company that makes retail based products. But also, um, I'm a big fan of Gigi Lucas, and she does something called Surfier Negra in Northern yeah. Florida. Um, and mm-hmm. she, awesome. in the past couple of years, has just exploded, um, and for good reason. Um, so in the past, I guess because time is all getting melty to me, but it was maybe last year we did a project together and, and created a, a board and, and a fundraiser to get um, young women of color uh, into the ocean and experiencing wave stuff. So right off the bat, like when anyone, someone asks me a question, it's like, what's something that if I could work with her every day or do collaborations of that sort, that's it hands down because that's, um, the nuts and bolts of, I don't know, feeling good and, and also really doing something that's going to make a change. Brands or companies or businesses that I've really enjoyed rather than like name them, they tend to be ones that are like the people really, really believe in them. So friends that have had restaurants, some really close friends of mine in Rhode Island um, have a little juice bar market spot um, called Alma. And it's been really funny and uh, rewarding as well to kind of realize and work on a project with people from its inception. You know, so um, another one is a restaurant in LA called Woon. Um, mm-hmm. I worked at Insight with Keegan, the owner of it. And when he left um, to take time away and also be with his mom, who was going through some medical stuff, and it was her kind of dream to open a restaurant, I said, Look, I know you guys don't have a budget, but I want to be involved with this in some capacity. Um, and whatever it is, we'll figure it out. And now we're up on year three with that restaurant and it's looking like, you know, there's lines of products now for the shelf and perhaps other locations. So those types of, I don't, I hate to say clients cause they become more than that to some extent. I, collaborators, I, collaborators. Yeah, they're collaborators. Yeah. Like yeah. those are great, but it doesn't necessarily have to live entirely in that hole because there's some people I never have super close relationships with, but the ones that really let me have. I don't want to say creative control, but trust me yeah. to kind of go into a space or a project and go, look, we're not going to micromanage you terribly. The worst ones, and, 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 I don't, and I don't dare you know, say worse, but the ones that have been educational are the ones where, and it's been educational, I think, perhaps for both sides of the coin, is that I don't particularly make myself clear or really understand exactly what it is I need from the situation. And that person asking or that collaborator asking doesn't really understand how that works either. Um, and so inevitably one side, oftentimes I feel as though myself because I'm going to kill myself trying to please the person ends up feeling uh, put out at the end. And it's taken years to come to that. And even still now where I feel like I'm pretty streamlined, I still have to like, bounce ideas off my partner, you know, and be like, you know, read, read over this email. Like, am I, am I off? You know, because there's certain things where I look at the idea of a project and go, I want to do that no matter what, I don't care what the budget is. I want to do that because that's going to be fun. And these people seem great. And then sometimes I'm like, dang it. I really, uh, kind of like killed myself on this project and it's been now a really long time and, and I'm feeling a little bit, um, put out, but 
I would say the I'd say the worst client I've had really ultimately.